It was during quarantine. My dad was going through some old family videos because he had extra time. And one of those videos was my baptism video and he sent it to me and my twin brother uh, to uh, show us when we were really small and show us the video. And when I watched it, I noticed that the deacon, when he baptized us, said, uh, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I know that the words, the matter and form is essential to the sacrament and if that was valid or not. So I emailed uh, one of my professors, a few other uh, priests and, and canon lawyers to ask what the, the answer was. Uh, that was about five months ago. Uh, and then uh, two weeks ago, when the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith came out with their statement on the words for baptism, uh, they clearly said that the words, we baptize you, is not valid. So I found out that I was never validly baptized, uh, which means if baptism is the gateway to the sacraments, uh, that all of my other sacraments were invalid as well. Uh, so I needed to receive all of them, uh, baptism, confirmation, the Eucharist, and then also my ordination. It was the full range of emotions. It was shocking at first um, that what you assumed to be true was not true uh, for, for so long, assuming myself uh, receiving the graces of the sacraments for, for 30 years, um, that I was no longer a priest. Uh, so uh, what was going to happen in order to uh, enable me to, to, get, to be a priest again? Um, and, and that really uh, did happen. Within uh, three days, I received the sacraments of initiation, uh, and within uh, a week and four days, I was ordained a priest. Uh, the sacraments are instituted by Christ. Uh, this, we don't make up the sacraments. The sacraments are entrusted to the church as the guardian and uh, the protector of, of the sacraments. So it's the church who's able to speak definitively about what the matter, uh, what makes up the sacrament, and the form, the words of the sacrament. Um, so when she speaks about the sacraments, it it's reflecting what Christ has given us. It's not the church changing that, but it's receiving what Christ has given. And going back to the, the witness of the earliest church, uh, the form for baptism is, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's what the church receives from Christ, receives from the early church, and preserves and maintains throughout her history. Uh, so there's many people that this has affected, uh, specifically those that have been affected by my ministry. Uh, thankfully, all the baptisms that I celebrated were valid, but the other sacraments were, were not. Um, so we have to work to remediate that situation, um, specifically for uh, the marriages that I presided at. Um, the church, in her, her wisdom and as a loving mother, responds to that situation to help uh, remediate it a, as quickly as possible. And the church knows what needs to happen and can make those, those changes and those fixes. But also, the, the Lord is not a liar. Uh, so that grace that I experienced, for me, the grace of the call to the priesthood and saying yes to that, uh, that was real. And the Lord really did call me uh, to serve him as, as a priest. And I would say the same thing to the people that have received sacraments, whether it's all of the baptisms that were done invalidly uh, by the deacon or by those who are affected by my ministry, that the Lord was still moving. Uh, and now, uh, in, in more of an administrative way, we need to go back and to resolve the issue because the sacraments are that important. It's in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. He says that the stewards of the mysteries of God, uh, the first characteristic is that they are trustworthy. So the church is seeking to be trustworthy in responding to this situation. There's many circumstances that uh, are more difficult to remediate. I think in a special way of my own grandma. I, I anointed her on, on her deathbed. Um, and I think the truth is that, that Christ it gives us the sacraments, gives entrusts them to the church, but Christ is not limited by the sacraments. Uh, and he honors and blesses the, the faith uh, and the desire to receive the sacraments uh, that um, might not have been given um, in, in my circumstance. I don't think anybody in the situation acted in, in bad faith. I think there might have been mistakes that happened in terms of uh, formation and understanding of the sacrament, 
Um, but this was a, a problem that when it was addressed, it was ended, it was stopped. Um, so I don't think anyone acted with any malice or any bad faith. So there's no anger that I have. Um, it's just more a concern for all the people that this affects. In St. Paul's letter to the Romans, he says, all things work for the good for those who love God. Uh, and I believe that even in this situation, as messy as it is, God desires to use it for his glory, uh, an opportunity that we have to talk about uh, the importance of the sacraments, an opportunity to reach out to these people that have been affected and maybe, uh, and then also uh, to, to give thanks to God for his providence uh, and that all of this can come to the light because when it comes to the light, uh, it, it might cause pain, but it, it can be fixed and we receive the healing uh, that the Lord desires for, for my situation and for all those that are affected.